Well, good morning. It's David Coombe here with the CBS AM debrief, uh, Tuesday the 15th of March. Um, investors still seem to be concerned about uh, or, uh, having a hard time understanding some of the impacts that uh, uh, the events in Japan over the, uh, the last four or so days are, are going to have going forward. Um, and, and certainly uh, looking at the US markets here, we saw a little bit of uh, the uh, problems that are going to be seen by some of the, the major uh, entities there on the Dow at least, um, chiefly General Electric, who are the uh, uh, technology partners in the, the reactors located there that uh, have um, suffered those explosions and fires and, and so on. So um, that, uh, that actually, uh, GOG actually was down 2.2% and uh, that's helped bring the Dow back below 12,000, which uh, we saw last, uh, this time last week, I believe it was, um, the first time since uh, uh, late January. So the Dow down 51.24 or 0.43 of a percent. Um, the uh, rest of the Americas, apart from uh, Brazil and uh, Mexico, uh, all down. So uh, Toronto down 0.4, NASDAQ 0.45, and uh, S&P 500.6. Uh, in Europe, a uh, slightly worse picture um, with uh, the DAX down most of all, 0.165, the CAC 0.129, and the FTSE down 0.92. Uh, now, there's quite a lot of trade that goes on between Japan and, uh, uh, and Germany, and I guess uh, in a way they're sort of similar economies, uh, so maybe that's why we've seen that big move there on the DAX. Um, Elsewhere in Europe, uh, Switzerland 1.25, Stockholm 0.97. Yesterday we ended up finishing up uh, down 18 points. Now at one stage we were down 80. Uh, I think that was really pretty much driven largely by fear and uh, the concern that uh, the, uh, as, as mentioned, the reactors would uh, would uh, sort of end up with a uh, Chernobyl-like uh, situation. That appears to now be less likely, uh, given that they do have these containment vessels over the, uh, the reactor cores. So, um, yeah, I think that's what uh, what helped uh, lift things throughout the course of the day, so that we ended up uh, down that, those 18 points. Uh, of course, the Nikkei was down uh, 6.8, now, that being its first trading day since the earthquake and subsequent tsunami. And uh, so that's a uh, so I think of the biggest move they've had there in about two years. Um, Hang Seng up uh, 96, and then moving on to look at what the futures is suggested me this morning. Uh, a little earlier we were pointing up, but, uh, now 4,604, down five, and the Nikkei shedding a further 150 at this stage. Hang Seng pointing up 61. Move on, take a look at the commodities. Uh, crude moving up here slightly, back above, uh, well, I don't know, got below 100, but yeah, 101 dollars and not 78 cents. Uh, natural gas uh, continuing to grind higher here, which is good to see, 3.903 dollars. And uh, throughout the rest of the commodity space, uh, coca, point one, uh, sorry, 1.89 percent down, uh, cotton down 3.42, Sugar down 3.71, lumber down 1.06, and oats down 1.85. Uh, rough rice up uh, 2.81, and that's about it for the movers to the upside. Uh, copper 4.22, uh, that's 1.1 1. 1 and a quarter, 1 and a quarter, and uh, uh, gold up five dollars to 14.26. Uh, silver remains unchanged. Okay, now the currency pairs, euro is buying 1.3889 US dollars, the pound buying 1.6172, and the US dollar buying 81.63, Aussie buying just above parity 1.0094, and the US dollar buying 0.9738 and US dollars, and 0.9243 Swiss francs. <clears throat> Pardon me, take a look at the economic calendar before moving on. 
So I had some uh, house price balance numbers out right on expectations there, 36%. And then we've got the NAB business confidence numbers for September, uh, which uh, was September quarter. Uh, not entirely sure where, where, why we've got that number here in the actual rather than the forecast box, but uh, uh, I know why. <coughs> this catches me out from time to time. Do apologise, we're on the wrong date there. That's looking a little bit better. Okay, Tuesday the 15th of March. So really not too much data out here apart from the German SEW survey of economic sentiment. Uh, expectations are there for 16, 15.7 being the previous. That's a reasonably high significance, that one. Otherwise, Japanese machinery orders numbers. Uh, consumer confidence out of the UK. Uh, that should already be out. Um, and then that is about it for today. So really, all in all, not terribly much on the way of economic data coming out. Let's move on to the Falcon Trade. Now, just seen a nice research note out from uh, GD Financial. They're talking about uh, AGL. Now, I know that AGL have substantial acreages of uh, coal fed methane and, uh, and natural gas and accumulating these um, tenements for quite some time and it would seem that uh, it would be fair to conclude that the uh, at the very least given that the Japanese are pumping seawater into their reactors which is generally considered to render them uh, useless that their demand for uh, LNG and uh, other uh, energy sources, carbon-based energy sources, is only likely to uh, to go up. And I understand AGL do have uh, assets in or have investments in um, LNG trains, and that should uh, that demand should be fairly supported here now. Has has come off from this recent run-up. Um, I would have expected that down around 13.50 here. We've got a heck of a lot of support there in the past. Here back in May last year, again June, September, all the way through here, and that uh, if we saw some sort of confirmation of a reversal, be fairly happy to uh, consider buying that. Just while we're on the uh, subject of the uh, the reactors, there, take a quick look at what some of the. Uh, Uranium companies are doing. Let's see, we haven't too much. Okay, so Paladin, Paladin is one. Now, keep in mind that uh, China and India are still manufacturing reactors, and there will be a structural supply demand uh, issue and um, we have seen that gap down here yesterday uh, back down to a line of support and resistance so could uh, consider taking a, a fairly speculative speculative trade on other than here if I can get these lines to work that would be good. No, not cooperating. Uh, and then the other one I was mentioned was uh, Bannerman. Must be MN. Okay, and again a gap down here. Um, probably not as significant as Paladin. Then I wanted to just take a quick look at what the index was doing. And we do seem to be coming back down to this level where we've spent quite a lot of time. And that's around this 45, 50, 4600 level. I've got a sort of a 
Come on to the straight line there. Okay, so what we really need to see is a little bit of a reversal here. I know that SPY futures are pointing down further at the moment, but I would be inclined to say that we're probably going to end up with an uptake today. Um, of course, if we don't, and we take out these levels here, then um, we could be looking for a uh, potential visitation of uh, mid fours or, or even lower. Don't really think that's, uh, whilst that's possible, I don't think it's probable. Okay, well, um, I think I've uh, said enough there for this morning, so um, we'll leave it at that. And uh, as always, good investing and uh, happy trading. Until next time, bye-bye.